Hi, everyone. I'm Yifeng Zhu. And I'm Jin Han. OK, yeah, this is, today is our great pleasure to present our new work on human wave from single video imitation. So most of us, most of, most of us, if not all, like, would definitely want generous robots in our home doing a lot of household chores, right? But then, like, humanoid robots nowadays, you've seen these, all these trending booms, with their human-like embodiments can naturally fit into the environments because the, it's actually designed for humans. Also, because of their human-like embodiments, they, it's, more, it's more possible to perform a wide range of dexterous manipulation tasks in our everyday environments. So now we've seen great advancements in the hardware designs, and also many companies have shown great demos. You can see on the first floor. But however, despite their great potential, humanoids struggle to autonomously interact with objects through their open world perception. So data-driven methods like learning from demonstrations render themselves a viable path towards uh, teaching more natural movements for the humanoid robots. But where does all this data come from? In prior work, researchers have mainly investigated two categories of work. First one is using kinesthetic teaching. While it's very intuitive for the researchers, it's actually very hard to control high degrees of freedom and also very hard to teach natural movements when it involves, higher deg uh, involves more arms. Like, there's another part, which is teleoperations. However, usually the teleoperation devices cost more money, and even if people have reduced the cost of them, it still requires excessive efforts to always op operate the robots. So what's the more, uh, more possible alternative? So researchers have looked into the uh, learning from visual demonstrations, where the, providing, the way of providing demonstrations is more intuitive, and anyone can provide them through video recording. However, most of the results require paired robot data, which still imposes a lot of efforts on the demonstrator. And also, uh, it's hard to scale to humanoid robots, and they're only shown on tabletop manipulations. So how, do we, so how should we teach robots new manipulation skills in the easiest and most intuitive way? So we seek inspiration from how humans learn from their very beginning of childhood, as the underlying learning mechanisms uh, reveals the most intuitive way of learning that humans will feel comfortable with. Let's check out this video from a cognitive science study decades ago, where the adults were teaching a baby new manipulation skills. Now notice that this young baby, who hasn't developed the ability of language understanding by then, look at how the adults perform the task, and can almost correctly imitate the task in the same way. And note that it comes so natural to her that there, this demonstration only needs to happen once, and the girl can immediately imitate. And she can imitate a lot of tasks, not only just single, a single hand manipulation, but also some object interactions that is definitely not natural to her. So motivated by this study, we envision a future where human and human noise live together, and anyone can teach their human noise a new task face-to-face -face using just a single video recording. So in such a setting, it is almost effortless to teach robots new skills, since no matter training or data pre-collection is needed, and also it does not require expertise because no control devices are involved in this whole process. However, it brings great challenge in this setting because first, the videos are actionless, meaning that there's no ground truth actions for the policies to regress to, so you cannot use the common imitation learning pipeline. Also, and it only requires single demonstrations so that uh, the common imitation learning paradigm does not, work, uh, does not work here. So how do we tackle these challenges? We go back to the baby's example, and we have two key observations. The first observation is that the baby actually look at how the adult's move, hands move so that she can understand how the arms and the hands are moved during this manipulation. And the second one is object-centric, meaning that she was understanding, interpreting how the objects are being manipulated in this whole process. Motivated by these two observations, we introduced OKAMI, which stands for Object-Aware Kinematic Retargeting for Humanoid Manipulation Imitation. Oh, so input to OKAMI is a single human video observed by the robot. Then, OKAMI would enable the robot to roll out in different spatial and visual conditions. OKAMI has two stages. In the first stage, we generate a reference manipulation plan from the video, which is a spatial temporal abstraction of the video that tells the humanoid robot which objects to manipulate and how human would manipulate them. In the second stage, we synthesize humanoid motions through object-aware retargeting, where we map the human motions onto the humanoid robot while adapting to the object locations at high time. 
in the end, with the raw data generated by Okami policies, we showed that we can use such data to train closed loop visual motor policies without any teleoperation data. So how exactly does Okami work? We first use state-of-the-art VLM GPT-4V that comes with powerful common sense reasoning ability to get the names of the task relevant objects from the video. Then we localize and track these objects across the video using foundation se segmentation model and object tracking models. Next, we identify the sub goals based on object motions estimated by track any point models, detecting large changes in velocities using chain point detection. We also estimate the human motion using a human reconstruction model, getting both the human hand and body poses at each time step, represented by a simple H trajectory. Then we generate the reference plan. Each step of the plan includes a simple H trajectory corresponding to the, uh, the, the set segment and to the associate object information. There is a target object, which is the object in motion due to manipulation, and a reference object, which serves as the a spatial reference for the target objects. Um, that, uh, yeah. And in the second stage, we introduce a novel process called object aware retargeting. To execute each step, we first retrieve the target and reference objects from the, uh, and the simple H trajectory from the reference plan. Then we localize the object locations at test time using ground SM and estimate the transformation between point clouds to compute the goalpost of the target object. And we also retarget the simple H trajectory onto the humanoid robot using a factorized process which separates the retargeting of arm and hand. For the arm, we warp the human trajectory according to the current pose and the computed goal pose of the target object. Here, warping bends the trajectory to ensure that the robot arm can reach the objects in their new positions while maintaining the overall curvature of the trajectory. We use inverse kinematics to compute the joint configurations. For the hands, we use the package called DEX retargeting to compute the finger joints. Then we send the command to real robot for execution. So here is an overview of how we deployed the Okami. So here is our lab in Mingyu showing the demonstration of a bimanual backing task to the humanoid. And Okami reconstruct the humans from the video and also track the objects as we mentioned in the method section so that the robot uh, the policy can generate a reference plan for the robot to imitate. So the robot can follow this plan to and be deployed in diverse environments where ju we just use only single video demonstration you just saw that Ming uh, gave to the humanoid robot. What's nice thing about this is that now we can collect data without any teleoperation and then train the behavior cloning policies, uh, policies so that robots can reactively respond to the stream of RGBD observations and the robots can like, manipulate uh, textures by manual manipulation. Uh, and also we use the robot, the humanoid robot GR1 with the Intel RealSense camera and control at 40 hertz joint commands which, which interpolate to 400 hertz in the low level action. We evaluated, evaluated over six diverse tasks that covers manipulation behaviors such as pick and place, pouring, manipulation of deformable objects, articulated objects, and uh, by manual dexterous long horizon uh, manipulation task. And we showed that Okami successfully imitates these diverse tasks and that Okami can maintain good performance when imitating videos from different users. Here, the users are from diverse demographics and has different manipulation speeds and preferences. Sorry. Uh, so now, now, now we, we just, uh, you just saw like the robots can train the behavior cloning policies using the, uh, using, uh, like using the Okami rollouts. And then we show that as the policy rollout increase, the robot can like increase the performance as we show. So we summary, we, dem we introduce Okami, which allows the human or robot to imitate from single video and which shows strong visual and spatial generalizations. And also Okami serves as a teleoperation free data collection pipeline for training closed loop visual model policies. And with that, we still have a lot of invitations in Okami. And the major thing is that it limits to upper body retargeting and also requires depth sensor in the video recording. So the future work is to include a lower body motion for local manipulation behavior imitation 
and also use RGB only videos. And with that, uh, uh, thanks for listening. And uh, our post session is also at tomorrow afternoon. Uh, thank, uh, please come and stop by. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Questions? We might have one quick question on that one, huh? Did I see a question somewhere? There. Here in the middle, please.